what we do here is go back, 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 back. Let's see if this works. You never know, it might actually work. Possibly it will. Good evening everyone, Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and how to. Um, you might see the cat's ear poking up in the bottom of the screen. She's literally just decided it's a good idea to sit in, right in front of the camera. Maisie, what are you doing? Absolute lunatic. <clears throat> she needs to move her, she'll probably lie down. <laughs> she'll be all right. Uh, there's Lucky Man one. It's just become a member. And it said towards a bag of fishermen's friends. Yeah, sorry if I sound a little bit croaky tonight. Uh, the throat is pretty raw at the moment. Oh, it's playing up, and uh, yes, oh yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, it's a members thing. Thank you. Sister. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. So yes, I am going to try and uh, do as much of this as I can. I've been really struggling to do any content this week at all. It's been. Uh, very difficult for me to do. My throat is literally on fire. It's not particularly nice. So yeah, I'm gonna do what I can. If I'm even more grumpy git than usual, then I do apologize. But yes, it is what it is. Hopefully, um, Maisie, please. <laughs> uh, hopefully the sound and the, uh, the visuals are okay. I've actually swapped back now. I've taken out my cam link Pro and gone back to the other two cards. The other thing was driving me insane. So hopefully the audio sounds uh, okay. Obviously, other than the fact that my uh, my throat is uh, pretty wrecked at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, so if you hear a coughing and all kinds of throat noises, I do apologize, it's just the way it is. Um, I could have just not bothered, but yes, I don't like to uh, see a lot go without it. There's a lot of you that do like to tune in on a Saturday evening, so I figured I would just give it a go, see how we get on. Siri, go away. What are you doing? I don't want to do that. Just want to work out what day it is. It's Saturday the 3rd of September 2022, for those of you who are wondering. Cannot believe it's September already. Where did this year go? It's not been a particularly good one anyway, has it? So, yeah. We said that actually last time, didn't we? I think it was, was it 2020? It's like, oh God, I can't wait for this year to be over. It's been a nightmare. Then 2021 come along and it wasn't much better. And 2022 has been kind of more of the same. Surely we should have uh, been due a break at some point. <laughs> uh, Ugly Bob's come in with a super chat there. It says, thanks for the live stream and keeping us deviants off the streets on a Saturday evening. Greatly appreciated. Well, hopefully you can all put up with my uh, my stupid croaky voice. It's driving me insane, so Lord only knows what it's doing to you lot. Um, yes. <laughs> for those of you who are saying alcohol, at the moment alcohol is possibly the worst possible thing that I could do for my throat. Uh, I've got a kind of like a weird acid reflux thing, so basically I've got hydrochloric acid from my stomach coming up and burning through my throat which is uh, not nice. There's all sorts of things you can do which will kind of alleviate it. Do things like your settlers, tums, all that kind of stuff, Gaviscon. It takes away the burning feeling, but it doesn't actually get to the root cause of it. So I've got to go through a process of trying to get through to the root cause of it and stop it happening. So currently I am uh, off the sweets, off the biscuits, off the chocolate, off the booze, off greasy foods, uh, most dairy. Uh, what else is there, Calf? There's many other things that I'm basically trying to cut out. Hopefully it's going to work. Hopefully it's going to work. But we'll see how things go. But you're still doing your coffee. Yep, yeah, still, still having coffee, not drinking it. 
<laughs> uh, limiting tea. And I love tea. I love drinking tea. But tea is possibly one of the worst things. So, anyway, we'll uh, we'll see how things go. See how things progress. If there is a little bit of a dip in content coming out, then obviously I do apologise. But trying to make content when you sound like this is not good. I've done it before. I've had colds and I've tried to make videos, and you can kind of just about do it. But this is uh, going on for a little bit, a little bit of a while now, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Lucky man's coming with two pound super chat. Didn't set the alarm, the light off for some reason, or did I just miss it? It's a sticker, I think. Oh, it's a super sticker, possibly. That might be why. Uh, third month to Xmouth by Humbug, and uh, Sky Stalker is with us. It says, damn, Discord doesn't like me. Discord loves you, Sky Stalker, and it's uh, super awesome to hear from you. I actually sent you a couple of messages on Discord, and like, where's Sky? Not heard from him for ages. You always worry about people, especially good friends of the channel. So it's uh, exceptionally good to see you actually in the chat. Is it? I can't see him. Uh, Dutch Jan says, it's, so it's a no eating diet. It kind of feels like that. I have lost best part of a stone in weight in a, just over a week, I think it is. Yeah, just over a week. <laughs> Down almost a stone. But then I was eating an absolute ton of junk, which is never good for you, so it's probably a good thing. And I'm still about a stone over what my weight should be. So, yeah. Hopefully it's, uh, it's doing good. We're getting there. Uh, Rick H says, I put a tablespoon of baking soda in a glass of water. It seems to help. Help. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's basically the same as taking Gaviscon and stuff like that. So it does relieve the uh, the burning sensation a little bit without taking chemicals and stuff. So it is a really good thing to do, but it is basically uh, a temporary fix and it doesn't really, doesn't help the, uh, doesn't help long term. You can't have that all the time, otherwise it messes up your blood pressure. Anyway, uh, Ordinary Dude says, how many pounds is a stone? Um, is 14. it 14? Yeah, 14. 14 pounds as a stone. Uh, Ugly Bob says, I hope you didn't lose the weight where it counts. <laughs> it depends where you think it counts. If I've let, lost it off of my, uh, my brain, possibly. Uh, where are we? So yeah, 14 pounds in the stone. David Underhill says, a stone has metric, metrication passed you by. We have a really weird thing in the UK where we have a very bizarre mixture of metric and imperial. Now, obviously, imperial is the way that we started out because we're British. Imperial, British, is kind of the, our thing. Um, but yeah, due to the whole kind of Europe thing, I guess, and joining the European Union, We've took on a lot of metricization or metrication. Um, I, I can generally, for most things, especially in distances and sizes, I can kind of know both. So like 300 mil is 12 inches, uh, 150 mil, six inches. Most things I can kind of, I know. But yes, it does catch me out sometimes. Kilometers to miles is always a weird one. Especially years ago when we used to have mopeds, it would only do 30 miles an hour, but then it would be something like 55 kilometers an hour. That was very confusing, working out if you're breaking the speed limit. <laughs> uh, Ordinary Dude says, I wish I could lose about six stone. You can, just don't eat or drink. <laughs> it will happen very, very quickly. Drink. Yes, I do. I, I, you can drink. So yeah, it's actually, it's, uh, I've noticed it in my face a little bit. Got some like, sunken in bits a little bit there. Actually got a chin as well now. Just the one. The second one's in there a little bit still. But I'm, I've lost some of my chins. So that's always good. Uh, Mark Barry says I went from 84 kilos to 75. Uh, low carb eating, took a while to get there. Yeah, kind of at the moment I'm doing well, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm just seeing what works for me. Uh, sort of today meat. I'm doing protein, mostly pr high protein, so basically meat. Um, yeah, see how that goes. Carbohydrates I tried. Yesterday evening I had a pasty. 
the chicken tikka pasty, that was a big mistake. Um, it was right at the time. Whilst the meeting is fine, it's just after, it's the, the kind of the, the, the regurgitation after, it's just absolutely horrendous. And anyone else who suffers from it out there, man, I know what you're going through. It is a horrendous thing. Anyway, moving on. If you don't want to know about my health worries, you can hear it. I <laughs> don't have to know about it. Uh, Ugly Bob says, you're getting cheekbones now. <coughs> Sorry. You're getting cheekbones now. Get some rouge on them. <laughs> uh, Stuart Cleary says, I'd like to lose some weight, although not through sickness. I'm, yeah. I'm losing as well. Calf's losing <laughs> it as well, because I'm not eating junk. She's tending not to as well. I'm the lowest I've ever been without being on a diet. Uh, Letta says I'm on the keto diet uh, for over 10 years and feel great. Uh, to be honest with you, I might end up going that way. Although he's always hated me doing it. <laughs> I don't like keto diets. I don't. I don't. I don't like the the restriction of it. But if you've got to do it, you've got to do it. I prefer calling it low carb and real foods like clean eating. Yeah, cleaner eating is all right. Uh, when I do, says I lost 35 pounds from COVID. What's that? Did you buy a test? Ba boom. Still got my humour. <laughs> I haven't got a voice anymore, but I've got my humour. Uh, Kieran Atkinson says, got another Gingmax RGB PSU. Talk about doing or going for full circle. The, yeah, I've got, I'm supposed to be doing a review on uh, a new or one of those, but they haven't sent it through to me yet, so we'll do that at some point. Um, well, probably in case you're wondering why there's a pair of headphones here. Uh, this was actually a very kind gift from uh, one of our Discord members, Seam at Night, who will never ever watch one of our live streams because, I don't know, he just doesn't seem to like them. But he's always in our Discord and comments on some videos. So I thought I would say uh, a public thank you for the headphones. They're awesome. These are the uh, HD569s. Now, Bob also sent me over the HD599SEs which I kind of would argue are possibly the better sound in, but those are an open-backed headphone, whereas those are a closed-back noise-cancelling headphone. So whilst I'm actually working in here and calf's in here, then these are the more kind of uh, calf-friendly headphones. It means I can watch films and things like that, and it doesn't disturb other people. So whilst I'm sat in here feeling sorry for myself and convalescing, I can sit down, watch a movie, and uh, not distract other people with, yeah all the music, audio, booms, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, so, Seam at Night, thank you very much, sir. Much appreciated, and also, obviously, thank you, Bob, as well. Big up, Seam at Night, for all the deals he puts on. So when CAF uh, so goes out, I can put on the HD 599 SEs. At any other time, I have to wear those. It does make a difference, actually. When you're listening to uh, the HD 599 SEs, because they are f basically fully open, they do bleed a lot. So if you're on your own in a room and there's nothing else going on, it's great. But if you're maybe um, sat in a room and maybe because it's summer, you've got the windows open and people are having uh, work done, like home modifications, all that kind of stuff, remodeling, as you Americans would say, you do hear pretty much everything, unless you have the music or whatever you listen to cranked really, really loud, which not a lot of people do because you kind of... You do want to take into consideration what is going on around you. If the Amazon man comes with your deliveries, you want to know that the door's gone, even though he's probably just going to throw the parcels on the floor and do a runner anyway before you even get to the door. Uh, but also for me, it's also very good to hear the cat scratching. Because if I can hear the cat scratching on the carpet, it means that potentially they're going to take a dump on the carpet. So if I can run out there and actually scare them off into the garden, then it saves me a couple of jobs. It's good. Saves you. Saves calf, possibly. Saves you telling me. Okay, calf, cats, shit again. Go and clean it up. <laughs> ah, right, okay. Where are we? Uh, Lord Erector says Mike needs an all-day gobstopper. Yeah, that is something which is, is... Part of it is down to... Because my throat is now quite inflamed, it's trying to keep it lubricated, but drink the right things, which are going to be beneficial, so... I've got my aloe vera juice, which is uh, very good and very soothing. Um, I think drinking cold stuff is supposed to be not particularly good, and drinking hot stuff is even worse. So you want to have like a kind of lukewarm stuff. Which is which quite is lucky soothing. Because that's how it comes out. Yeah, water, that's, not, that's normally how it comes out, like room temperature. Uh, 
Uh, where are we? Uh, Rick H says, getting older is not recommended, kids. And definitely. Well, saying that, I was probably more unhealthy when I was in my 20s than I am now by a long way. But it's, I don't know, I guess you just, your tolerance levels are a lot less as you get older because you're used to being a little bit more healthy. Uh, David Underhill says, I have five meals a day, three mains and two smaller in-between snacks. I have regular dietitian consultant visits. I have diabetes type 2 insulin dependent four times daily. Whew. Yeah, we all, we all have our... The human body isn't a, a perfect working organ. It's like a car. It's, um, if you put shit in, you get shit out. So if you use cheap Tesco fuel or whatever, sorry, Tesco then your engine's not going to run great. If you put decent fuel in and look after your engine, it's, your car is going to run well. And same for your body. If you put good, healthy nutrients in your body, in theory, it should run pretty pretty good. Where do you get these things? Yeah, best of luck trying to find those things these days that don't cost you an absolute fortune and give you the choice between either turning on your heating or f having food. Uh, Mark Barry says, it's all the processed junk we eat now which causes problems. I think mine greatly is down to sugar. My sugar consumption is off the chart. It has been for many, many years. Hence why I didn't want to do later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm actually, um, yeah, I'm not doing too bad. Considering how much sugar I consumed on a daily basis and how much I'm consuming now, there's a very small amount in a cup of tea and I only have maybe one or two cups of tea a day, maybe three. So yeah, it's a, a, a massive drop off. Uh, John says, Mike, uh, where'd I go? Yeah, you put anything in, you'll get shit out unless you're constipated. That is true. Uh, Lord Director says, Mike is a sugar daddy. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't had, um, or haven't, I might be pre-diabetic, I have no idea. I have tested my sugar a couple of times. It's always been kind of within normal levels. So I praise the Lord for the mercies that I have, that I have got um, mobility. I have got um, my cognitive, cogni Brian. I've got my Brian. My Brian works a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know what it is. Okay, Pop says, Mike, you don't need sugar. You're sweet enough, lol. Or so it says on the pub toilet walls. I've only ever been into our local pub probably Which pub five been? times. The Horseshoe. Uh -huh. Five times, do you reckon I've been in there? Maybe ten tops in my life. So if they can remember that far back, well, actually, yeah, we then fair play. Dinner on Friday. <laughs> back no. in the day when you'd have a drink at lunchtime on That's Friday. That's right, yeah. But we used to go to the other one, didn't we, more often? Uh, All right, actually, I know what I need to do. Um, obviously, the audio seems to be working. I've not had any complaints so far, so that's awesome. So I'm just going to test out to make sure the overhead camera works before we do anything else. Let's go into scenes and go into overhead. So now the overhead camera should be on and you should still be able to hear me. You won't be able to see me clearly, but you'll be able to see the, uh, the Mandalorian desk mat in its full glory. It's only there because the desk is wrecked. <laughs> it does look nicer and it makes the mouse smoother. Uh, Kenny D says, yep, it's working fine and dandy. Awesome stuff. Audio is great. Overhead clear as day. Brilliant stuff. So what is happening at the moment is we're actually using the audio from the other camera and I've got two layers of things in OBS basically. And actually I've got the live banner on already. So let's turn that off. Get rid of that. Don't need that. So yeah, it's working, uh, it's working pretty well. And if I go over is there anything over on there that I can show? Over, over by there. Over by there. Uh, where's my minimize thing? Let's have a look. So let's try desktop. So desktop should be working now and showing. There we go. Oh, that's still on the screen. Like is a sugar daddy. Let's get rid of that. So audio still working okay? Looking for some feedback in the, uh, the chat there. Let us know. There's no comments since Lord Erectus last one. 
Dutch Jan's thumbs up, awesome. Kenny D, yep, it's working fine. While well, Bill's even all, how you doing, Bill? Do, do. Stuart Cleary, all good. Excellent stuff. Sounds good. So, sounds working on the desktop. Sounds working okay on the overhead. And there's no weird motion blur. Awesome stuff. Unlike under our hob. And we're back to the main camera. Everything's working. We're back to some form of normality. I did actually, I, it, my problem is the HD60S. I don't know what it is. It just does not like being plugged in at the same time as a, the Cam Link 4K. It hates it. And it might be the, the HD60S might be just a bit junk. But I've, uh, I've returned my Cam Link Pro today, or it's in the process of going back. Um, yeah, that was a, um, it's a shame. That was a really good bit of kit. So now what I've got to do is I've got to try and get another two USB cards. I've ordered one today. So I've got another USB PCI Express adapter to go into the bottom of the PC there. So then I can plug in the HD60S to a separate completely separate USB adapter and hopefully everything will be all right. There's something definitely weird with that HD60S. It's USB type C. Uh, the lovely Bob sent over a USB to USB type C cable, which actually measure, measures wattage. It's more for charging purposes, but measures wattage. It does seem that whenever I use the HD60S with that, with a USB type C, it looks like it's not drawing enough wattage. There's something really screwy with it. So, yeah, anyway, it is what it is. But hopefully, yep, so uh, what are we saying? What a contrast to week, previous weeks. Brilliant setup. Thank you, Nick. 200 quid cheaper. Yeah, 200 quid cheaper. <laughs> and there's only stuff that I would have just left in the bloody drawer anyway. So so hopefully I'll be getting my 200 pound refund for the, uh, the Camlink Pro, which will go towards powering the Mub Studio for maybe an hour or two. And your throat. <laughs> yeah, my throat. Uh, CXPS says, Mike, what do you think about Ryzen 7000? Um, that is a very good question. Do, I was going to, today's stream or tonight's stream was supposedly about this case, which um, we'll try and take a look at. I want to try and address some other things as well. James asked earlier, hmm. um, sorry, what was your main issues with the case as I've ordered one? Oh, my main issue with the case um, is potentially you could damage your power supply by using it. There is, maybe I should get into, I'll get into it in a minute. The, 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 yeah, the eBayer Onyx case, it looks really good. And potentially it could be a very, very good case. And at the moment it's only 30 pounds at eBayer, which is a, a really good price for a case. We haven't seen prices that low since things like the uh, Game Max, Oh, what was the model of the Game Max little white one I bought or had sent to us? Which one was that? There's been a few Game Max cases anyway, which have been around £30, which have been awesome. Um, no, wasn't that one. It was the white. Is it Trooper? No, that's the big one. It's the smaller version of the Trooper. Commando. The, the Game Max Commando. That was £30 roughly. That was a great little case for what it is. Previously to that, all we've had really in the kind of in the cheap seats has been the Ions cases. They've been pretty good. Uh, the KX or KZ16, I think it was KZ24. A couple of others. The Curo. No, the Curo is the one I want to get hold of because that is effectively the same as the eBuyer Fusion W07, which was also very good. A little bit more expensive, but that was a really good case. Yeah. So. He said, H. Hi, Mike. I'm Hello, mate, on uh, Hot UK Deals. I'm the one who recommended this one. Thanks for covering this one. Oh, no worries. Awesome. Um, I did actually try. No, did I? Was it that? No, it was something else. This week, I tried to. There was a deal on. Hot... Oh, no, I know what it was. The uh, Asus, the H610M-K Prime D4 motherboard was on offer at. I think it was. Amazon at the time. It was less than 60 quid, which is a pretty decent price. And I've done uh, two reviews on it, or one BIOS upgrade or BIOS tour, unboxing, go through all the specs and all that. Which for people, if you're looking at buying a motherboard, if it's on a deal, 
What do you want? You want information about it, don't you? You don't want biased information from manufacturers. You want someone who's actually used it or has some experience. So I'm not allowed to post my own content on Hot UK Deals because it's self-promotion. I used to be able to years ago. They didn't care less. But since they've become all kind of corporate and shit like that, they don't allow it. So um, because I've done a review on it, I'm not allowed to post that review. So all I did was posted... Um, I'm not allowed to post... I'm not allowed to self-promote. I just left that there. So people can see my username is Mike's Unboxing. Some people will be like, oh, Mike's Unboxing, search that on the motherboard and you'll get a review. Makes sense. It could help some people out and save them possibly making a mistake if they don't want that board or there's some features they don't need. So you can help deals within about five minutes of me posting that, basically deleted it and give me this snotty email saying, uh, you're not allowed to do that, it's self-promotion, blah, blah, blah. By putting what you've put is clearly self-promotion, uh, which is not tolerated. So my reply was, look, I'm trying to help people that are on your site. Your site is to help people find good value. Now, people can post deals all day long. Yes, they might be cheap, but are they actually good value for money? Is it something that people do actually want to buy? A review, obviously, will highlight that. Someone else could have posted my video on my behalf, that's fine, but I'm not allowed to do it myself. So if no one else sees it, yeah, anyway. So it's like, well, I'm trying to help your community, which is what you should be doing, which they refuse to do because potentially I might have an affiliated link, in which case it takes away revenue from them. I get that. I understand that. But yeah, it's uh, it's just them being ass hats. K Z says... says um, actually, let's go back a few. Uh, Nomad says, hey, Mike, how old are you? Um, please feel free to guess. I did say that, yes. <laughs> please feel free to guess. And what did you guess? Early to mid-60s. Uh, no, probably <laughs> early to mid-40s, not past that, though. But that'll do. That'll do. You're in the right ballpark. Uh, Captain White's with us as well. How are you doing, Captain White? Uh, KZH says, oh yeah, they're super tight right now. Anything on scan is instantly taken down as a precaution as they're suspected for self-promoting. It's just pointless. Like, it's it's a deal site. It used to be a deal site run by the community. But they sold out. Sold out massively. And banned me. They banned Kath as well for <laughs> promoting me because we're married. Uh, they even had a go at Sardon. Sardon84, who actually... We have spoken to in this chat since that, since that has happened. Um, he actually got a lot of his posts taken down. He almost got banned himself for posting links to my videos on items that he'd posted when we have no thing whatsoever. But it just so happened that there was a load of Game Max stuff that he was posting his deals, and I've done a lot of Game Max videos. So obviously, being UK based, it made sense to promote my videos or post my videos. And they got really upset with him about that. It's like, why? What is the point? It's uh, it's just pointless. You're trying to help people in a buying community. And especially now when times are hard and people haven't got a lot of money, you don't want to make a mistake when you're buying stuff. So I get quite arsy of them on our Discord yeah. if anyone shares their links. So yeah, <laughs> if you come onto our Discord and you post any Hot UK Deals links, they will automatically override any affiliated links from anybody else. So if you do post any Hot UK Deals links on our Discord and Deals chat, um, either Kath or one of the moderators will probably click on the link and then redo the link to wherever it is, just to try and cut Hot UK, hot UK Deals out of the link. Because, hey, if they want to ban us or prevent us from posting links, links, then we'll get rid of theirs. Only our video. Dougie Bob get banned. Uh, Lucky Man says I got banned for... Uh, stated in link to mub fm <laughs> uh, ugly bob says i got banned from hot uk deals but i'm just an awful person oh bless you bob you're not <laughs> uh, lord erectus says they didn't give a toss they just want you to buy exactly the thing that annoyed me was that i is couldn't unsubscribe to their emails every day because they banned me and i couldn't log in to unsubscribe yeah Ugh. Uh, Casey said, oh God, not Sardon, he's an excellent guy and puts a whole lot of effort into his deals. I love how he talks them through reviews. Frankly, I think it should be a requirement on every single post. Yeah. 
yeah, Sorodan does a great job, and uh, I've spoken to him privately now many times, and in our Discord as well. He's a great guy, and he's going through a lot of stuff himself, so he doesn't need like hot, K hot UK deals busting his balls for stuff. They really don't. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, Alessa says I got banned from Twitter five times lol, never going back again. I I I deleted our Twitter account probably about two years ago now. It's when they got Twitter, too big for their boots. Twitter is just a massive, massive cesspool. It really is. Bots. Like, yeah, it's just it's just bots and assholes. And I never know who I'd rather talk with, the assholes or the bots to be and honest got with you. WhatsApp, Instagram. LinkedIn. Yeah, we got we rid of all of it. Whole lot, didn't we? we did got rid of some, a lot Raised of them. them. Uh, Matthew Day says hot UK deal. Also nitpick the hell out of free beers. Yeah, they're like um, hot UK deals is. It's supposed to be hot UK deals. <laughs> the, it's in the bloody. Um, it's it's in the description for their title. Hot UK deals. So it doesn't matter if uh, it's someone you know, if it's your best mate, if it's an eBay link, um, whatever it is. If I was selling, say for instance, I was selling, I don't know. A new pen. Yeah, a Mike's Unboxing pen. And normally they're five pounds or something and I was selling for 50p. That would be a hot UK deal and people might want to know about it. So if I posted it and I was, it was my own deal, but where's the profit fine. For them? There's no profit in it for them. Which is why Hot UK Deals have now affiliated themselves with a lot of companies directly to post deals. So if you're not one of those direct deals, then basically you're out of the loop. It's, it's, it's like Twitter and um, LinkedIn and all that stuff all over again. So basically, it's kind of pay to win. And milking your data. And they're, yeah, and they're just absolutely farming your data. It's absolute assholes. Uh, Jay Gordon says, went downhill when Pepper took them over. I agree entirely. Pepper is a horrific company. They're Literally, that's all they're after, it profits. They don't care if the deals are good, bad, or indifferent. Like all they care is that they've all got affiliated links, which is what they have. It's arse, absolute arse. Hot UK heels. Hot UK Hills. That would be a good segue over to talk about AMD's week well, this we week. Well, we need to set up Hot UK Bills dedicated to Ian Bill of EastEnders fame. That's a good idea. Who said that? Ugly Bob. Bob. <laughs> Cheers. Bob, what have you been drinking tonight? <laughs> You've been smoking... Why, why Ian Bill? Why not Kathy Bill? Could be Kathy Bill, yeah. Or Pete. Alright, drink. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <coughs> 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 Uh, Lucky Man says Discord deals on Mub is better. As long as they to, don't contain hot to, to, be, deals. to be fair, yeah, they, they do contain quite a few of hot UK deals, own deals, which we then repost. Bless you. Ah, well done, young Bobolopolis. What was the herbal aid, a muffin? Uh, no, I'd imagine that would be. Um, Mary Jane. Uh, Squibby says they used to be a good place for uh, heads up on deals. Now I don't even bother because they want to extract... Uh, uh, they want the exact store or something silly. Plus they delete users' details and replace it with mod place deals. Yeah, they quite often do stuff like that. Or a mod will delete a post because it doesn't meet their strict criteria. So they'll repost it to get the glory. To be honest with you, UK Hot Deals was better when they didn't have the heat ratings that applied to the users because it just turns into one of those things where it's a popularity contest which it shouldn't be about that it's nothing to do with a popularity contest it's about random real world people like me you calf all the others out there that are watching this it's like us we go out we're searching around trawling around for hours on end looking for our deals for ourselves we see a good deal and we think somebody else might be interested in that and then you post it you're not doing it because you want everyone to know you're a great deal poster. You don't care about that. Or at least I don't care about that. All I care is that maybe someone else is going to find a deal and maybe be able to build a PC for 
their budget. And you might find a reindeer. And you might find a reindeer. I've never won that. Flame deers can go off. <laughs> We've got our own flame. Uh, William Bodie says, what was that sound? A plane. It was a, it was a helicopter. Was it a helicopter? It was a helicopter. I could hear it from my periphery ears. It was going around the other night for hours. Now I've lost weight a bit. I've got a little bit more room on the side, so I get more, air, more uh, audio input. You might get more aerodynamic. It might only take three minutes to get to work on foot. CXPS says, have you already reviewed the PC case? I have reviewed it. It is up on... No, it's not released anywhere. It's not quite out to patrons. Patrons will get it on probably Monday, I think. Probably not, but yeah. Monday or Tuesday. They'll get it soon. <laughs> I was a bit lacking this week. I've been... Uh, helicopter lucky. says, what did you do now, Mike? Well, we're actually... Where we live in uh, Bristol, there's a, an airfield r relatively nearby us, which is called Filton Airfield, which is where uh, Concord is housed, or used to be housed. And that is probably, I don't know, less than five miles as the crow flies kind of thing. And also to our south there, to the south over there is uh, Bristol Airport. So we're on the flight path for Bristol Airport and also Filton Airfield. South is that way. Northeast is that way. Shouldn't do that, it's like a salute of some sort. North east is that way. So north, no, north east. That's south over there, sorry. That's southwest over there. It might be southwest Bristol Airport. I'm sure it's over that direction generally. Anyway. South, south view for the park, glass facing up that way. Yeah, but it's looking to the south of the gardens. South of the park, oh yeah, not south of the road. Yeah. Anyway, next time I go out, I'm going to take out my uh, my compass with me. But yeah, basically, so the helicopter rescue is uh, kind of over in that direction somewhere, and the airport is in that direction somewhere. So pretty much everything comes or goes over the top of us. Uh, Glenn says, "Did you uh, did you go to Bristol Zoo's last day this week?" No, no, it's actually really sad that that's closed down. They are going to be reopening Bristol Zoo. It's going to be somewhere just off the uh, M4 M5 junction. So it's going to be kind of out of town, which actually kind of makes sense because getting to Clifton in Bristol is a pain in the ass. And parking around there is awful. House prices are high, so that's probably yeah. why they want the land. Basically, yeah, the house price, <laughs> Clifton in Bristol is basically the, where the highest priced houses are. Kind of millionaire's row and all that kind of stuff. So the land that the park or the, the zoo is on is worth probably... Millions. It's got to be in the region... 30 to 40 million at least it's so huge, it's, it's, it's a nice. massive place it's probably going it might be worth more than that maybe 50 million based on the the prices of houses around I'm actually saying that it's probably close to 100 million because yeah, a small a small house would go for a million in uh, clifton easily like a, a very small house so you could probably fit a good 50 to 60 houses there so it's potentially it's going to be a massive money spinner and they did the same actually in bristol with um our local hospital so french a hospital is french a village is kind of the nice village or it used to be a really nice village and it was quite expensive and it was also very close to town but also kind of suburban and all that kind of stuff so french a was expensive and the other hospitals in southmead which was kind of not so nice let's say so they sold the hospital uh, to build houses on and they moved everything to save me where it's cheap as chips uh, ugly bob's giving us two pounds towards our clifton pad two pounds wouldn't even buy us um actually yeah you, you actually couldn't get a parking space for two pounds just for an hour <laughs> it's really expensive Scribby says, what, one million in Bristol? <laughs> yeah. There are some areas of Bristol which are like super, super expensive. Saying that, if, even in our road where we live, um, the kind of average house price in this road is about 300,000. Oh, that was years ago. And that was a while back. So it's probably more than that now. I'm 
a bit tempted to have a look actually how much that one down the road went for. Uh, X Skeptical says, I just used that case for a build. Right, let's uh, let's take a look at this case. I better get on with it because I've been wittering on like some kind of lunatic for uh, three quarters of an hour. So this is the uh, the beast that is the ATX gaming computer case, RGB fans, tempered glass. So you can basically tell what it's all about on there. The model number is LP-F2007. Who's that from? Uh, Rick H, 50 bucks. Thank you very much, Rick. Uh, would $50 help with that house? Um, every little helps. If we had a few more days, we'd be all right. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to live in Clifton anyway. It's one of those areas that because there's a lot of money there, a lot of houses that there are student houses because there's colleges and universities in Clifton and also um, the BBC kind of uh, natural history headquarters are in Clifton as well. So there's quite a lot of stuff up there. There's some very historic buildings and very historic places. There's uh, some, actually some quite kind of uh, controversial places as well. So there's, there's a place called Black Boy Hill, which they've been trying to change the name of that for years. And also there's a, a road called White Ladies Road, which they've also been trying to change for years because of the connotations of how the roads were named years ago and why they're called that, etc. But I guess it happens everywhere. It's, uh, Bristol is a very historic city and because of being a port city, there was obviously a lot of things uh, like slave trade and stuff like that was very, very common. And in fact, a lot of the houses in Clifton and the kind of uh, St. Werberg's area and stuff, which were massive houses, they were uh, wealthy people who generally would have had slaves. So it's, yeah, it's a very, it's a very unusual place, Bristol. It's, it's, there's a lot of history. A lot of history. But my opinion is, why change things? You can only learn from the past if it's still there to learn from. Although we generally tend to make the same mistakes over and over. Let's have a look at this case anyway. Uh, have I left anything on the screen? Yes, I, can't. I didn't do... Mafia's free on Steam. Mafia is free on Steam. Yes, I did notice that. It's, uh, that's quite good as well because it runs on an absolute potato. I'm allowed to eat potatoes. As long as they're not fried. Or roast. I think. Actually, roast potatoes. Oh, act bastard. Shock. Clearly, this case has a lot of static. So, let's get this out and have a look. <laughs> Lord Director says Mike's family had uh, did a lot of work trading stray cats. Oh no. Uh, who's that? Click Tech Kev. And got a head like one. Thanks, Kev. <laughs> straight in, straight in with the uh, stereotypical slurs. Well done. Where's my drink? Let's have a slurp a minute. Oh dear. Right. It's actually, just use that piece for the It's pretty solid. All right, let's see if you spotted the things that I spotted or the things that I, I felt needed addressing. Okay, so this is the uh, AlphaSync stroke eBuyer Onyx. Now, if you're buying a eBuyer PC, some of their pre-builts, which are the AlphaSync range, there's a strong possibility it's going to end up in one of these cases because it's one of the options for it. So, uh, in my review and the unboxing video, which is going to be coming out, you'll see it actually listed as AlphaSync Onyx or eBuyer Onyx or EG Onyx derivatives of that or by its model number which is uh, LP-F2007. So this case on the front you've got, I believe this is glass. It's on one tonight, all that static from the plastic will help your hair stand in up. Cheers Kev, <laughs> on my back it will. <laughs> yeah that is, that is glass isn't it, does it scratch? No, that is, uh, <laughs> that is definitely uh, glass. 
So tempered glass front panel, tempered glass uh, side panel, obviously. There is actually a decent, what's going into um, Sean Connery then. There is a decent amount of uh, airflow mesh on the side. Unfortunately, the fans are very, very, very low static pressure. So even just taking the front panel off, if you have it wired up and you see the fans, you take the front panel off, they basically get much faster and they move an absolute ton more air. So probably the first thing I'd be looking at doing is taking the fans out. So if you've bought this case for a build because you're thinking, cool, it's got built-in fans, yeah, you might want to reconsider that slightly. Up to you. Like, obviously, I'm used to having all sorts of cheap and cheerful stuff, cheap fans, like three pound fans, or those cheap eBay ones we had, the MSI fans, like five quid a fan. But on the flip side, I've also done things like the uh, the thermal take fans recently, that, which were like a hundred pounds for a set. So I've kind of got some experience with different fans, noise profiles, etc. Go on, Calf, you got your hand up? Greg. Not really on subject. I can't see it. It says R H U K D. Still removing your comments. Uh, they are not removing. They've removed one or two. Yeah. If I if it's something to do with uh, basically Yourself. me self promotion, then yeah, they get the ump with that. Uh, Lucky man says the MSI one twenties were a deal. Yeah, they were good. They were good. Uh, side panel. They've done this really well actually. So you've got the nice blacked out. Edges all around the outside. The thumb screws are absolutely fine. When you take them out, the rubber mounts don't want to fall off or uh, go anywhere, which is something which was a problem with the MSI Forge 100. I nearly caught that. <coughs> no, I've kicked it. Yeah. So I'll take the side panel off and have a quick look inside. It is a little bit on the shallow side, I'll be honest. Could do with a little bit more depth there. That's what she yeah. said. So inside wise, it's 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 fine. Clear. The glass. The glass, yeah. That is something which I didn't notice in the review that the side glass is completely clear, where the front glass is smoked. So for me personally, I would have rather have had either the front being clear as well or the side being smoked. Now obviously. You can smoke the glass quite easily if you want to. You can put some tint on it or whatever uh, to match the front. You do find that when the system's up and running, the fan in the back, when you're looking at it side on, seems a lot brighter than the front ones, obviously, because there's uh, a glass in front of it. I'll take the back panel off so you can see through. Uh, Squibby says, what is the trend with cutouts for the PSU bays? It's so tacky. I know. Uh, the back panel is okay. It's a little bit on the flimsy side, but it's fine. So you can see, there's some pretty decent cutouts. So you've got a nice big cutout there. You've got uh, only one really here for your 24-pin uh, power connector to go in, which is fine because you don't really need more than that. Um, there's not a great deal of clearance between the top, so if you want to put a radiator in, it's it's going to be really close to the motherboard, I think, for a lot of people, depending on what motherboard and what RAM you're using, and obviously what um, what all-in-one cooler you're planning to use. The the mesh on the top. Now, actually, I'll leave that in place so you can see it. The top section where the radiator is going to go. Now you look at that and you think, oh, that's cool. There's a lot of ventilation there. Um, you'd be wrong because it's basically solid metal until you get to there. So you've only got those, the cutouts or the holes in here, rather than being the usual hexagonal, which are much better. Uh, it's got this very bizarre mixture of very fine holes and then slightly larger holes. So airflow is gonna be a little bit restricted whether it's intake or exhaust on there. And very quickly there, let's uh, say thank you to Arali. Thank you, O'Reilly, for your 15 pounds. Sorry I'm late, uh, just back from dinner with uh, friends. Hope you had a nice dinner. I actually had a really nice tea tonight. It was uh, chicken wrapped in bacon. Nothing else, just chicken wrapped in bacon. You have a bit of cheese. Oh, there was a little bit of cheese in it. Yes, that's true. Thank you very much, uh, O'Reilly. 
that work? That has worked. Oh, the life thing's on. Let me get rid of that life thing, because that's uh, rather annoying. Not as annoying as your mouse. You've got a mouse smart and everything. I have got a mouse smart, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, airflow on the top is probably going to be okay. It's not overly... Well, you can see it. it. You can also see there's kind of lines, so... Yeah. Could be done better, I think, personally. But hexagonal mesh would be preferable. USB wise, two USB 2.0, fine. Uh, single USB 3.0, you've got your power button, a couple of LEDs, and also you've got your RGB lights button, which is extremely important in this case because um, that's the only way you can control the RGB at all. There's no other options at all. Right, I'm going to take the front panel off. At least I'm going to try and take the front panel off. This is really hard to do. So front panel is uh, got this kind of weird hexagonal mesh on there, which I don't particularly like. I think it actually detracts from the look of the fans on the front. You probably could, with a, a relatively good knife, trim that out of there, I think, which I probably will do. The glass itself appears to be bonded um, here and here, and possibly a little bit on the side. But it doesn't, yeah, if I push there, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick that up very well. Yeah, you can just like see it there. So if I put it there, you can see the glass is coming away from the frame on the sides. So it appears that it's only the top and the bottom which is actually bonded. So taking out those uh, bits in the middle will be absolutely fine. I don't think it'll make a great deal of difference and potentially make it easier to clean. So when it gets dusty, because trying to get into there, is going to be very hard work so i'm very tempted to do that to go ahead and uh cut that out of there i'm going to see if this will actually snip without shattering the glass That's an okay. right that does work so just with some snips live case modding everybody you get any money's worth tonight <laughs> this right goes straight through the glass. Personally, I don't think the hexagonal mesh on here, or this hexagonal cutout, actually makes a great deal of sense on here anyway, because there isn't anything else on here which has got the same shape. Is it only one fan size? It is only one fan size, yes. The um, the 120 mils are all you can put in here, top and bottom and wherever. And the front, which you'll see shortly, I think cut that one. So that actually, I think that it's looks. Not really a filter, is it? It's just that looks better, I think. Show what you cut out. Uh, the bit I've just cut it's out. Not really a filter. Is it, it doesn't do anything at all. It's literally just a shape behind there to break up the uh, the RGB, and doesn't really support or do anything to the glass whatsoever. It doesn't hold it in place or anything. Okay. It's only held in at the top and bottom. So that's actually you can actually you can see where the dust is already sort of. Can you can you see that on the camera, where the dust is settled on there already? See where I. Wipe my finger along. But the cats have been sleeping on top of the box. Well, I think just in production, in a storage, it's going to do that. Like, literally, I've only had it out for a, a couple of hours at best. So, yeah, that's going to make cleaning that piece of glass much, much easier. So, yeah, I prefer that. I think that's better already. That can go in the plastic recycling. Yeah, we can sell that. Sell it. Put it on UK Hot Deals. Put it on UK Hot Deals, yeah. <laughs> Mike's unboxing one of a kind. X eBayer gaming PC. So let's have a look at the uh, the front now with the front panel off. So you can see the fans. Normally, in this case, those fans will be mounted on the front. Now, if they're mounted on the front, the airflow is worse. Did you say that? Considerably. Mesh, sorry. Did you say it had a mesh version? Uh, no. It's was got mesh down the sides. That might have been a support for a mesh version that, that you cut out. Um, it could be. 
Could be. I don't. I haven't factory. seen. A, I haven't seen a mesh version, but there might well be, or that might have been an option at the factory. Uh, so yeah, the cutouts or the circles there. That is what it is. There's nothing you can do. You can't put larger fans in because physically they're cut for uh, 120s. So originally the fans are on the front, sticking out a little bit, which obviously makes it basically sandwiched against the glass, which makes the airflow even worse again, because there's nowhere for air to get in. So I've deliberately taken them all out and put them behind, which takes up a little bit more room inside and reduces what you can do in terms of GPU length, but it does improve the airflow. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much by, I didn't measure it, I should have done actually, but it felt like there was more air. So if I put my hand inside, I could feel more air going through. Not the most scientific of things, but it is the way it is. On the back, so this is the controller. It looks really little. It is tiny, isn't it? Uh, the controller has two extra ports. All of the connections for the fans are proprietary six pin. So you potentially, you could rewire them. When I did the review, I was thinking of like someone like Aletta would probably take those apart and rewire them and do whatever with. They don't appear to have a separate lead to differentiate between the power for the fans themselves and also the RGB lighting. So if you were to reduce the fan speed, you may also be dimming the bulbs at the same time. I'm not 100% on that because obviously there's no pinouts, there's nothing described or anything, so you don't really know what it is. But with the uh, the six pins, let me see. So it doesn't really say on there. It's got 12, 12 volt, ground, ground, D, and 5 volt. So actually maybe the 12 volt one, maybe the 12 volt one you could put some kind of rheostat on. So cut out the 12th pin on each one do something with it again it's it's one of those things that unless you've really really got the time and effort put into it to do it you're not going to do it so i've reviewed it with the uh, the mindset of i wouldn't do that uh, when it comes to powering it it does have a sata connection to power the lighting and fans which is awesome much better than having a molex in my opinion there isn't any way of controlling the lighting so you cannot add additional items to it and you cannot synchronize it with your motherboard. The only way you do that is doing it manually. So if you set your motherboard to uh, RGB puke, set the fans to RGB puke, absolutely fine. Set your motherboard to white, set the fans to white, it's absolutely fine, but there's no way of synchronizing it, which for some people is a bit of a deal breaker. Um, for me personally, I would prefer it to have some means of synchronization, but there isn't. There is a lot of RGB uh, options in there in terms of what lighting effects you can do. But uh, yeah, it is very basic. What's the price of the case? 30 pounds, which is cheap. 30 pounds, plus. well, if you buy it from eBay, it's 33 pounds 50 something, I think, that's what it posted. If you buy it from eBuyer, I think the cheapest you could do it was 30 pounds plus their Super Saver delivery, which I think was 5.99, I think. It might have been slightly more. I got six ninety nine my hair Yeah, it's it's less than forty quid basically all in. I did it through eBay personally because it was seemed a little bit cheaper way of doing it. Because you're that tight. Because I'm that tight, yeah. Even though it's a, a tax deductible, it's still like I'm not spending that extra couple of quid. So that uh, there is a drive tray. You can put a drive in the bottom, so you can bolt a drive directly to the chassis on the bottom, which is going to make it noisy as all hell. If it's a mechanical drive. If it's an SSD, it'll be fine. Because you are being a bit picky for something so cheap, really. There is a caddy tray, so you can mount a three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive to there, and that just slots in on the top and locks into place. That, I think, is fine, because they haven't used up a lot of space for a caddy. It doesn't remove any of the airflow from that bottom, not that you'd kind of really rely on it too much. So yeah, in terms of that, it's, it is fine. It is fine. The thing that bothers me the most is the power supply. So the power supply section, you can put in a big decent power supply, but, but the ventilation is hideous. So on the bottom, so this is actually a lot smaller. Actually, let me get a 120 mil fan just to give you a, uh, a visual representation here. because I think this will explain what I'm trying to explain much better. 
crap. Tell you what, let me pick up a fan which isn't connected to loads of others. Uh, Fucking Nora. Oh, dear Lord. Anybody want to buy any cheap broken fans? They're not overly broken, just slightly broken. Oh, shoulder. Right, so comparatively, MSI 120mm fan. So if I put this here, you can see that there isn't a huge amount of uh, ventilation space there. See, that is relatively restricted. To make things worse, this mesh is actually very, very fine, like ridiculously fine. So hopefully you can see how fine that actually is up close. And then to compound it, we've got tiny holes on the bottom here. So by the time you make the very, very small holes go over the even smaller holes, there is probably each one of those holes gets reduced down to about another quarter. Which is like, not ideal, it's not ideal. It's a, a bad thing in general. So with the fan being kind of there, raised up a little bit, most of the air that the power supply is gonna be pulling in is gonna be actually from the case itself, if the fan is strong enough, which most power supply fans aren't brilliant. And also because this is a budget case, you're unlikely to spend 30 pounds on a case and then spend maybe 50, 60, 70 pounds on a decent power supply that would actually survive higher temperatures. Most power supplies are at their best when they're anywhere around the 40 degrees Celsius mark. Anything over that and they start losing efficiency quite, it's quite a drop off. So if you've got a relatively budget power supply in here, which I'm guessing most people would do, combined the cheap power supply with the lack of ventilation and that is a recipe for a disaster in my opinion. It really is. KZH. If you wanted to, you could mount the power supply upside down. So it's at least trying to draw in some air from above it. Again, not ideal. I would probably personally cut this out, get a multi-tool on it, cut out that inner lip, which is still going to leave the mesh there, or maybe just don't use the mesh and possibly um, use a vacuum on it frequently. Because if you get a little bit of dust buildup on there as well, you're effectively your power supply is going to be uh, dying a very, very short death. And potentially could, could light on fire, which is never a good look. Solution. Solution, install a T30 fan in your PSU and crank the static pressure to the max. You probably would need something along those lines. It is not, um, yeah. The, my, my thing is with this case, it isn't gonna be, just ruin that. No. Um, with this case, if you're a novice builder, and it's your first case, or your first PC build, or you, you don't know about this, even probably more experienced builders, I think if you built it in its stock configuration and started throwing some pretty heavy duty parts at it, or a slightly substandard power supply, it's good, you're gonna, not gonna notice it anything probably initially, within the first maybe couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months. But my feeling is that it's going to kind of strangle the power supply. Power supplies are resilient, so they, a reasonably good one will throttle or at least kind of limit what it does output wise. But then when you're limiting it, potentially you can get error 41s, um, sorry, kernel 41 or whatever it is the issue where this PC just shuts down and you'll be like, why is my PC shut down? Most people won't bother to even think about a power supply overheating, which I think it possibly could do quite easily in this case. Um, other than that, it's it's got a lot of good things going for it. Obviously, the four fans are included. If you don't mind the noise, then they're absolutely fine. Um, 
Actually, let me f I'll fire up the fans so you can hear what they actually sound like. Okay. Um, have I got a... Yeah, mounting it with the fan facing upright, I think, would be uh, a good solution. And something that I would certainly uh, certainly consider doing. I think that <clears throat> that is a, a good solution to the problem. Um, it, it depends what you're putting in it. If you're only going to put in like an APU, you're probably going to be fine. But probably and definitely are uh, kind of worlds apart. And why can't I find a kettle lead now? Mm. There we go. Um, Matthew Day, will this be the move to modified edition? Um, I'm hoping not. I don't really want to have to modify it too much. Thing is, as soon as you start modifying a case, I wouldn't cut the section away entirely. It loses, yeah, it, it loses a lot of its resale value. As soon as you touch anything on the case, any mods, like if I was going on to eBay or any of those kind of sites and I was looking to buy or build a PC, if I saw a modded case, I'd expect it to be ridiculously cheap because someone's already messed with it. And if you've had to mess with it to make it even kind of moderately usable, uh, that's never a good look. So this is a noisy power supply. I'm going to say that. Best one, it's my best power supply. I've got so many power supplies here. I don't know why I keep on using this thing. I should just chuck it out. But it's been with us and been with the channel for such a long time that I uh, I don't think I can. And you can contrast what you would actually see in the case. In Whenever I plug in anything on that end socket, it always makes that monitor turn off. It's dodgy as hell. So there we go. That is with the uh, the fans on. And I don't know. Can you can you hear the fans? Daryl. Hello, Daryl. Uh, with six RGB fans, is pretty no, cheap. All oh, right. I built my nephew. Built my nephew. Uh, cheap must set case, and it was pleasantly surprised. It came with six RGB fans for seventy US, but seventy USD on Amazon. Yeah, seventy dollars isn't really with cheap. Six with six fans, it is. Uh, Montec X3 Mesh has six fans and went down to fifty dollars, uh, fifty pounds. Sorry, but everything about the case is a bit dodgy. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, William Bodie says using a headset, I can hear the fans. So that I I couldn't use this case in a PC in here for working because it would drive me insane. It's and the fact that there's nothing you can do to change it. Now, obviously, this is wide open at the moment, so um, it's, it's not at its best. It is fully wide open. But in this situation, the airflow actually coming through it. I'm going to measure the airflow because that is something that I didn't do in the review. And no doubt people that are watching this video will want to know that. So if I do this in the video, so let's get out my Emma monitor. And we'll turn that on. And we'll set it to uh, min max. I can see what it said. So maximum. So let's put that in. Which way is the airflow? That way. So I'll put it dead center in the case. I would say I'll test it at 100%, 50%, and 20% fans, but I can't because they're always 100%. Oh, the fan cables also. Fan cables are proprietary, and there's no PWM, no addressable RGB, it's just into the hub, that is it. So what do we get? Maximum airflow is 3.3 uh, miles per hour. So let's put the front panel on, and see how that affects the airflow. I'm going to guess 2.2. Uh, let's go min max. And I'll put it in the same place again. Clearly, this isn't 
a particularly scientific way of doing it. I could put the front panel on, but side view. Uh, that panel on. Yeah, yeah, side. Your front, my back. Uh, I reckon 2.2 .2 at best, 1.1 miles per hour. So one third of the performance of those fans. And actually they just feel super, super weak now. So that front panel is extremely, extremely restrictive for these particular fans. There is still air coming through, don't get me wrong. And the noise level has gone down a little, but not a great deal. Yeah, you can, you can hear the noise of the fans now because they're struggling against that front section and they haven't got the static pressure to overcome it. It creates turbulence. They do look nice though. I think it looks nice. Yep, yeah, I'm agreeing with pretty much everything you lot are saying there. Mike's aerodynamics. Yeah, Benny Hill says, like most cases now, it is about looks rather, uh, yeah, it is about, uh, rather about looks than cooling stuff. Uh, Rick H says, I've built PCs in much worse cases. Frankly, I have. But the thing is with this, it's kind of, is marketed as being a really good deal. But that restricted airflow, considering there's four fans in there, you're kind of almost relying on this one. Like, you can put your hand over the fan altogether, and because it's got uh, slits on the side, all the static pressure is lost completely. But again, it's done for looks. So you can see the, the slits on the side. Oh, you can't particularly well there. Maybe you can on that side. I can see them. Mm. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can see the slits on the side. So the slits on the side are great for letting RGB out, but absolutely suck majorly what, for doing anything see else. That? Got black edges around the glass anyway. You probably wouldn't unless you're on a specific angle. Uh, Vicky Anderson says you don't make. They don't make them as good as the Antec 900 with plenty of space and fans. Yeah, they should have updated the 900. Kept the original specs, but just added in things like an EPS connector and the pass through for a GPU. It'd been great. Uh, TechSoul says, to be fair, all the sides are off. Uh, they are. They are. I could put the sides on. It's kind of. It's not going to be really doing a great deal. Like there's. There's so little static pressure from that front. But like this is kind of best case scenario. Worst case scenario. <laughs> so let me put the uh, <clears throat> put that side on. I don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference, but I will try it. Uh, is anybody else apart from me, the guinea pig, tried uh, OBS Studio Twenty Eight, the new version? I kind of like it. What if you reversed the Molex connection so the fans slow down? Uh, it's a SATA connection, so you can't do that, sadly. You probably could, like I said, if you wanted to, you could probably get creative. And on the incoming 12 volt line to the hub, you could put some sort of rheostat on there maybe wire it to the back or something so you could adjust the fans but then with the airflow being as shit as it is at full blast can you realistically justify turning the fans down i think that would make it a lot worse um what can i do here to i'm, I'm going to try that i don't think it's going to make any difference at all i think that's probably if anything is going to make the airflow worse so let's go again with min max and airflow is going in that direction Try and get it roughly in the same place. I can see it. The um, 
the fan blades and the anemometer are basically stopped. I can see, I can always count the blades going round. So let's take that out and what are we at? Yeah, 1.1. Actually, the movement of me taking this out of the case has increased the airflow to 1.3. Hey, Pops. How you doing? Say hello. So I've put it in front of the fan. Uh, which way is it? Airflow, that way. Let's see what we get on the exhaust from this one at the top. The exhaust should be better. Actually, I can see it already, it is. Uh, 1.7. Um, if we look at the back, actually what is blowing out the back currently. Yeah, by the seat, I know. Is Maiden 666, greetings from Brazil. I'm learning a lot from your content. Ah, good to hear it. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, the airflow in this is, uh, yeah, best case scenario, 2.6, because the fan is fighting against the holes which they put in there. So it's basically, it's just a combination of so many things which make this into a, a bad airflow case, which really it shouldn't be. I've seen cases with a lot less available airflow, but better fans do much better than this. Um, is it worth 30 quid? I don't know. I don't think it is, personally. I really don't. Let's unplug that. Listen to the difference in the noise. That's quite dramatic difference. It really is. So if you don't like a noisy PC, um, or you want to put in parts which actually need airflow, then this case is, physically it can do it, but you'd need to change out all the fans, which then when you're paying 30 quid just for a case without any fans, I think you can probably do better. Actually, I know you can. Uh, O'Reilly says for 30 quid, I would double the budget and look for something better. Yeah, I'm, my biggest regret is the fact that this is from eBuyer. So sending it back is kind of, quite a difficult thing to do. Although, for the sake of 30 quid, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll find a use for it. Ugly Bob says, for a ten or more, there would be loads more options. There definitely would. Sorry. <laughs> Benny Hill says, if it comes with a free PSU, avoid. Uh, Alessa says, I think a cardboard box would be an upgrade. I actually considered that as part of the video when I was going to uh, record the video, I was thinking, do I do a combination of, can I make a better PC case out of the box that the PC case comes in? That would be quite a good video. <laughs> I, I, but then, I know, no, Poppy, I've got to put something back in there now. So anyway, there is the, uh, there's the ting. No, that's why I modded it, because I knew it wouldn't go back. It came like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's broken when it arrived. I opened the box and that was what it was like inside. <laughs> you should make it easier out of the box it came in. I reckon that would be good. I, I, might, I might do that. Clearly, making a PC out of a cardboard box isn't the best of ideas in terms of uh, the health and safety of people living with you. Cardboard has a, a very strange tendency of actually setting itself on fire. So I would probably recommend against that. Right, let me get... Paul, I tuned in late, but is there openings on the front panel that would allow more airflow without the plastic covering? I think it's glass. It's, yeah, it's glass on the front, so... Um, I'm not sure, Dave. My my personal thought on it is, if you put in some fans in there which have got a decent amount of static pressure, it would overcome a lot of the limitations. But the 
it's actually it's it's quite bizarre that the the kind of the major selling point of that case being the fans and the controller are also its uh, weakest part as well which it does happen quite a lot Stuart Cleary says that was a very slick reboxing. Thank you very much. David's off. Uh, thanks, David. Catch you all later. Doom 2016 awaits. Doom 2016, otherwise known as the World 2023. Bang! Bang. I love this power supply. I realise I'm on my stupid chair again. I should be on my uh, my nice chair. I wasn't going to do the stream, like I said, so it's kind of... Uh, these are a very cool thing. If you want to see, if you want to try and optimise the airflow in your PC or anything, actually, get yourself a anemometer. Anemometer? Um, anemometer. I can't say it, but get one. Get one on Amazon quite cheaply. And you can try different configurations of your fans and see what works, see what doesn't. It's very cool. See, MSI fans, these have actually got a pretty decent amount of uh, static pressure. So replacing all the fans in that case with those would probably be okay. But I think realistically for that case now, I'm going to be on the lookout for a very, very cheap APU and probably Microtix motherboard thing just to get some very, very basic PC in there just to try and... Uh, move it on and put in a, a possibly even cheaper power supply if that is oh shit even if that is a thing that's something i forgot that i got leads to stand on <clears throat> sell it to your boss for upstairs i might do i might do yeah i'll sell it to my uh my sunday boss as a, a work pc and if he says he won't buy it i'll say well i'm not working sundays anymore then screw you hippie Right, I'm going to drink some water a moment. I'm trying to think what else I can go through and show you to this week that I haven't shown you already. It's been a pretty quiet week in terms of deliveries. We haven't really had anything, have we? No. We've some seeds and they haven't come. Well, it doesn't help that China is basically gone. But the seeds are from the UK. Oh, yeah. Did you look up the Lark Box Pro? Uh, Mike, did you look up the Lark Box Pro? No, I didn't, no. I don't. I still haven't done that. And of course, yeah, the Royal Mail Strikes as well. That's probably not helping. Yeah. You get other nonsense come... Oh, shit, I didn't put that way. That's all those tax documents and all that. But... Yeah. Well, the tax documents are right because there's a, a rebate. No, it's not, actually. George got stung, didn't he? Oh stop, dear. Stop. That's my chair. Not uh, what else have I got that I could show? Lord Erectus is an erect bit viewer. Oh dear. That's very terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> very, very terrifying. They also haven't got the uh, KZH says, what happened to China? Well, basically, China is... Um, I think they're very screwed at the moment. It does appear that... Um, there was a report that there's like 20% unemployment at the moment for younger Chinese people. And being that most of those people will be in jobs of kind of, uh, in the production in some way or form, whether it be distribution, packing, assembly, all that kind of stuff. That is what generally a lot of younger Chinese people as their first kind of jobs that they end up doing is those kind of production line jobs because obviously China is a country which produces a lot of stuff. And yeah, because of the last couple of years, China has really struggled. So a lot of warehouses and smaller businesses definitely have gone to the wall. So there's a lot of unemployment and production is kind of slowing. It's never a good thing. We used to get lots of emails, didn't we? But we didn't yeah, really get literally. Like, since 2020. Well, yeah, literally since from... Late 2019. From when the... Um, the pandemic started basically the kind of the Chinese emails basically dried up almost 
straight away and they've never really resumed we haven't had anything to be fair years. i do actually block a lot of them now so it could be that uh, quite, a lot of them, quite a few of them have been stopped uh, matthew day says the is that akabel uh the akabel 350 watt three pound charity shop psu is the one i usually grab for testing it can't beat the old ones. That actually, that little power supply that I've had just out there, and I think it's only two hundred watts, if that. I don't think our charity shops are allowed to send it, sell anything electrical. Where are they? Yeah. Uh, Day four says major drought is also causing no water issues to, uh, to produce power. Power plants closing down, people out of work, etc. Yeah, it's uh, it's not great. It's not great. Uh, James Miscellaneous says, wow, OBS 28 had a UI overhaul. Yeah, it's uh, it's very different. It's kind of, I don't know what they've really done. I know they've, it's, it looks different. It looks a lot bolder. It's not as like condensed as it used to be. Lucky man. Uh, Lucky Man says, best DDR4 size megahertz for Intel B550 without OC standard out of box. Um, the best DDR4, well, DDR4 um, 3600 is the sweet spot for B550 and the 3000 and 5000 series chips. And that is just not overclocking, that's just hit uh, XMP. Uh, James says the font is different. I'm currently looking into how to make things more compact again. Yeah, also as well, the uh, all the plugins don't work now. So if you've got things like the uh, Stream Deck, now it says the plugin doesn't work. Every time I fire up OBS, it says your Streamlabs, uh, your Stream Deck is not supported. Please reinstall the plugin. So I just unplug the USB, plug it back in, and it works. Or sometimes I just close the message, and it still works. It's very, very bad. Uh, William Bodie says, with what is going on around the world, it sounds like doomsday is upon us. Now, there is actually a very, very um, common thing that happens in October, or late September, early October, which is basically normally financial crashes. If you look at most of the large financial crashes that have happened since uh, the 1800s, roughly, 1900s possibly, they've all been September, October. So... If there is something going to go tits up, October is generally the month. Awesome. Um, I'm going to say October 21st. Seems like a nice number to me. I don't know why October 21st. They used to be saying, October, what was October the 20th? That, that was a significant date for some reason. I can't think why. Probably car insurance. <laughs> it's one of those things that just Blends sticks up. in your brain. Uh, cheers, Glenn. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Stuart Clary, 10 euros, says thanks, uh, Mike and Kath. Get well, Mike. Get well soon, Mike, and look after yourself. I will do my best. I will do my best. I'm not sure I'm a throat. Just having meat for tea tonight does seem to have made my throat a little bit better, which is awesome. It's a very, very pleasing thing. But living on meat alone is going to cause other issues, like my kidneys will probably explode. And uh, what's the other one you get from keto diet? Nothing. Or, no, from meat only. There is something in there. Your... Oh, gout. Yeah, but you need to eat <laughs> That'd be fun. With it. I have to have some veggies as well. Thank you for the 10 euros, Mr. Cleary. Uh, William Bodie says, was it not bro Broketober? <laughs> Let's hope not. It's, it's possible. There was an interesting article, actually, that the uh, the Vatican Bank actually asked all of... Uh, sorry, isn't the... Yeah, it was in the Catholic News, which is the Catholics' um, kind of website for basically Catholic people, I guess. And, yeah, they reported that the Vatican have actually requested, or ordered, sorry, all of their... Um, auxiliary places around the world to remove any assets 
financial or liquid assets and return them to the Vatican Bank before September the 30th. That's definitely through for thought. When I read that, it's like, hmm, what do they know that we don't? What am I? What am I? Don't know. Catholic. Ah, uh, well done. <laughs> Catholic, Catholic was doing that. She was actually licking the air. She was a Catholic. Ugly <laughs> pop put it. Uh, John Summons says, I don't know Jordan, uh, sorry, I don't know, but Jordan Peterson, that name rings a bell, and his family are on the meat-only diet, and they have found a lot of health benefits. I wouldn't mind doing that. I could quite happily live on it, but it's just expensive. Not meat only. Meat and vegetables, I think I'd have to do. Yeah. Too much protein's not good either, just average protein. Yeah. But with veggies, and once you give up the sugar, you don't miss it much. I don't miss it. It's just you can't ever buy. Uh, Dave Hall says get some ionic colloidal silver. Yep, taking the colloidal silver. Swigging that. Cats love it. <laughs> methane diet. I think that's the uh, after effect of it. Bit of methane. Actually, saying I know, on the meat only diet, you don't tend to... Actually, no, you do, don't you? You do get gas, don't you? Because meat generally kind of... Um... I've never farted when I was What's on it called? Um, diet. I loved, I loved it when I cheated and could fart again. What's the word? Uh, meat when it's in your stomach, it decomposes. It gives off gas when it decomposes. Aroli, Aroli said it decomposes. Thank you, thank you very much. Wind, yes. Actually, I think I got one brewing right now. I'm gonna squeeze it out. That's from some carbs. No, better not. <laughs> Uh, John says, just have a uh, chicken file and you'll be fine. I do miss Chinese and curry. Um, I used to love having an Indian, but if I eat an Indian, that makes my throat ridiculously bad. Not through the spices while I'm eating it, but it's the, the reflux after. It's just horrendous. Uh, Dave Hall says, hope Mike is using a strong dosage concentration. I don't know what it is, it's actually. 15 parts per million. 15 parts per million, Cav says. That's low. But does he know what you were like? You're so... Yeah, I was just glugging away at it. He's so... You can't... You've got to control him a little. You give him homeopathic remedies and he's like... Takes like six of them instead of one. Dave Hall says 15 parts per million is low. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. Low and, low and slow. Low and slow is what... Yeah. I can't trust him with anything too high. <laughs> I do get a bit silly and just start chucking stuff down. Um, right, I think we should talk about Ryzen 7000 series and what people's thoughts are and people's opinions. It might be 25. I've you know. got to say, I'm actually considering not going Ryzen 7000 series for various reasons. It's 15. There's me, colloidal. Sorry, headphone users. <coughs> Sorry, headphone users. Uh, what Bill says, what make is that? What Bill? Never lose it. Um, <laughs> what make is that huge keyboard behind you? This one? It's not huge. It's actually quite compact. It's uh, perspective. That's the MSI GK50. Because those bastards at MSI. Yes, Rich, I'm talking about you. You know who you are if you're watching this. Um, yeah, they wanted the GK71 Sonic back, so yeah, that went back this week, wasn't it? Tuesday? No, Wednesday, wasn't it? Yeah, because it's a bank holiday. Yeah, so the GK71 uh, Sonic has gone back, I'm sad to say. Can you do the... Let's, I can't do the writing. I can't read it. What, writing? Up a little bit. Oh, you might be down a bit, actually. Oh, our boss or something it looks a little bit like. Alright. Oh, um, yeah, sorry, I'm not sure what that... I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. Um, looks like Gavok. Probably were wrong. Uh, hi Mike, I want your opinion on how future-proof my PC is. I've got MSI Tomahawk Max uh, R7 2700X, 16 gigs rip jewel, 
Zotac 1660 and Corsair 650 Gold. To be honest with you, it's absolutely fine. A PC is only ever going to be as future-proof as the programs that you're running on it. So if you're running a program which needs more power, then that is the end of the life for your PC, if you have to use that program. If you um, are just playing games, uh, word processing, all that kind of stuff, generally you can tweak the settings a little bit to get a little bit more life out of the system. The one thing you'll probably find with the 1660S is NVIDIA have a weird habit of not supporting graphics cards for a long time in terms of actually increasing their performance. So kind of the day one performance is kind of really where you're going to stay. Whereas with AMD drivers and graphics cards, generally they do tend to get better. So if you have two level pegging cards on day one release, you probably find by the end of the kind of product cycle within four or five years, the AMD card's gonna be significantly ahead in the, quite a few instances. But yeah, um, in terms of future proofing, future proofing is a very difficult thing to do. It, again, it comes down to what programs you're actually planning to use. For me, using Adobe Premiere, you get to a point where, depending on what you're um, actually trying to do in the program, how many lines or how many layers of graphics you've got or uh, footage, it all adds up and eventually it gets to the point where your PC like waves the white flags as look, I can't do this anymore, I need an upgrade. So then you have the option of either lowering your quality and settings or upgrading your system. Yeah, chuck in some colloidal silver and see if it goes bang and clean on the car insurance. AI insurance. On it. Ah, dear. So, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Lucky Man says 7,000, uh, way too expensive and prefer to go all the way on AM4, definitely. They said thanks for your answer, Mike. Oh, no worries. You're great, always watch your videos. Thanks, buddy. Uh, James Miscellaneous says, uh, I'm with you, Mike. Let everyone else beta test the AM5 socket and CPUs that will be replaced with 3DV variants. Uh, with time, AM5 will mature and it can be re-evaluated. I think, yeah, the, the initial concerns are going to be the same as is on every platform. And it seems since probably around about 2015 onwards, it's kind of... There's been this precedent set that whenever a uh, manufacturer releases a new processor, the first launch of motherboards are all sort of uh, god tier boards. Very unlikely you're going to see some mid or budget boards, which makes sense financially for them, I guess. Uh, also, processor wise, you're not going to get your kind of entry level APUs and lower end, like four core parts or six core parts straight out the gate. So, if you are an early adopter in AM5, uh, in October, realistically, you're going to be using relatively expensive DDR5. Very minimum, you're going to be using the Ryzen 7600, which is what $300, £300 roughly in the UK, probably about 350 because the dollar exchange rate. Motherboard wise, you're not going to see a motherboard for, I'm guessing, at the lowest end, about £200. So even though the 7600 does compete very well with Intel's uh, 12900KS in single core performance, is it kind of worth it? You could quite easily probably pick up something like a, a Ryzen 9 3900, a, a decent B550 motherboard, probably 32 gigs of RAM, and still have a considerable amount of change left over. You may not get that rocket lightning speed single core performance and some of the other features like PCI Express version 5, which again, if you're an early adopter of PCI Express Gen 5 for SSDs or NVMEs, you're going to be paying over the odds for that like we did with PCI Express Gen 4 drives now. It's going to be, it's going to be for the, the rich kids basically, isn't it? And it's going to be video after video after video after video for the usual things like your know, J's Two Cents, Linus Thanks. Tech Tips, Gamers Nexus, um, Hardware Unboxed, they're all going to be going to town on it. And they'll all be saying, well, this is X percent faster, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, do we really care? If you're, 
in the position where you've got enough money to be able to buy that brand new platform and all the new stuff to begin with, realistically, you don't care how good it is because you're primarily going to be buying that stuff for bragging rights or just because you're generally interested and you want to experience it. But I think the majority of people are going to be ones that are in a kind of a little click or group or maybe even like Discord, that sort of thing, where you want to be that person who's got the latest and greatest, whereas most of the people, 99% of the people are just going to be running on older stuff. And in fact, I do find that even now, some of my older videos, especially the B450 videos, are actually picking up pace now because the other markets, which are more neglected, are starting to be able to afford those more and it, there's interest in it. So I think the older AM4 platform has still got a long, long way ahead of it. I think it's going to be around for a long, long time. AM5 is going to be the kind of almost like the HEDT section, so like your high performance, which used to be on a separate socket, is going to be the new platform, and the mainstream is still going to be AM4. And they've said there's going to be more AM4 processors being released. Uh, I nearly said released and launched at the same time, and it's relaunched. Relaunched isn't a word, but if you want to use it, you can do. I do. So, yeah, I think that's where we're going to be. Ryzen 7000 series for me, seeing what we're seeing, it also, um, when it comes to the new sockets and the new graphics cards, I think they've been absolutely 100% tone deaf in what is going on around the world. So every other electrical goods manufacturer on the planet is trying to reduce energy consumption, but graphics cards and CPUs are increasing it dramatically, which to me is kind of like so insensitive to what is going on. Like we're not even at the, the peak of where our fuel bills are gonna be yet. We're nowhere near that. And people are still getting twitchy now with their bills. So when it goes up 80%, which it's potentially gonna do, and then probably more the year after, and potentially the year after that, who knows? Energy is gonna be at a premium. So why on earth would you be considering buying a graphics card which is gonna draw multiple more power and you're gonna to have to buy a new power supply to potentially run it it just seems completely tone deaf it really does benny hill says yes it's nuts mike greta will not be happy well no and actually this is the one time where i can wholeheartedly say actually in terms of energy efficiency and people doing stupid things i think uh, amd nvidia and the other manufacturers of graphics cards and processors have completely lost touch of reality. They really have. Uh, James is saying, yeah, one thing that might make um, the RISC CPUs or ARM CPUs takeover is going to be the efficiency. I think AMD are trying to get there. And AMD have come out and said that their 7000 series processor is something like 50% more efficient, but they've added 50% more power to it. So it's kind of, yes, it'll do more for less, but you're still using more. Yes, very bizarre. Uh, Team Drift Nation video says I have a customer's custom 10900KF and 3080Ti PC here drawing over 500 watts in ADA64 testing. Yeah, 500 watts is insane. Like 500 watts is what some old kettles used to be. Or actually a microwave oven. And would you leave that on all day long? Eight hours? No, of course you wouldn't. Yeah, if you, if you literally have got money to burn, then, yeah, why not? Uh, Team Drift Nation video genuinely, genuinely cost me like five pounds to run an eight hour stress test on this. Might have to invoice him for that. Might have to go back to a battery yeah. doorbell. We were saying that, yeah, going back to a battery doorbell. I'm seriously at the point now where I don't want to benchmark stuff. 
because there just actually isn't any point. Unless I was going to do a video which is going to make so much money that it would pay my electricity bill, there's absolutely no point. And yeah, as long as the PC does what I need it to do, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, George says, on the positive note, the heat produced by our computers should warm up your room a bit in the winter. That is a, yeah, that is a, a very, <laughs> a very small wedge on that side. We have got a wood burner, but it's yeah. the standing charge that's more expensive than the gas we use anyway. So it doesn't really save us a great deal. Uh, right. William Bode is asking about the Lark Box, Lark Box Pro. What, what is that? Lark Box Pro. That's an interesting little PC, actually. Well, it's an Intel Celeron J4125 processor, so it's not really fast. Um, but there's lots of different Lark Boxes, it seems, by lots of different people. There's lots of different ones. Personally, those little mini PCs, it depends what you're using them for. If you just want to use them for consumption of content at 1080p, then they're absolutely fine. I find a lot of them, especially even the Celeron ones, even 4K footage, anything over 30 frames per second, and they start stuttering. So William, I will I will look into that a little bit. Mark Berry says my landlord won't allow log burners as he thinks they're a fire risk. We did have a chimney fire yeah. once. We did have a chimney fire. It was uh, quite scary. Uh, Kev says I feel the uh, PC hardware is a premium these days. It is, a, it is a luxury. The same way a nice car is, people will purchase a nice car knowing that they will have to fuel it, and it's a luxury. I agree with you 100%. Absolutely 100%. Um, and, like, I'm in a really privileged position where I could, if I wanted to, because I can claim it on tax, I could go and buy 3090 Ti and a 5950X processor no problem, and it would just be offset against my tax, so I could have it quite easily. But to me, it's a luxury item, and also, I've got to power it. Now, I can claim a portion of my electricity bill back through my taxes, but with, your, with having that sort of stuff, you're then thinking all the time, should I be running this, or should I be doing that, or should I put my frame rate limiter on? I do that now. I put v-sync on all the time just to keep the frame rates down to keep the power consumption down it does make a massive difference uh, team drift nation video says do you reckon the pc market will slump with its massively high inflation time um i don't think it will slump i think it will just change as whenever there is any kind of fin financial or um ecological or whatever going on in the world the markets always just change they shift and it's not always a long-term shift sometimes it's just a little blip like look at uh, webcams when the pandemic hit webcams suddenly and streaming equipment were a premium because everybody wanted a streamer or uh, get on a webcam so they increased in cost now as we come out of it somewhat and things are somewhat getting back to some weird form of normal People don't need webcams so much, so those webcams now are considerably cheaper. Now, the premium ones are still going to be premium price, but your low-end stuff is now kind of not a million miles off from the price as it was. I think the uh, Logitech C920, which is kind of like the benchmark of webcams for the last 10 years or so, at its best price ever, I think that was £30 or £20 or something, and you can quite easily pick it up when it's in stock now for about 30 35 so I think things are starting to get better and the market is readjusting itself whereas now because graphics cards are starting to become more available prices are slightly shifting so graphics card prices have come down but motherboard prices have definitely gone up case prices i would argue have gone up quite a lot 
Um, look at something like the Corsair uh, 4000X or 4000D. Those used to be sort of 50, 60 pounds, whereas now they're sort of 70, 80. So it's just the shift in pricing. Uh, Squibby says, I find myself turning down settings a lot of the time and not noticing the difference. Uh, the heat output and power output goes down drastically. Yeah, I very, very often I will turn down settings and like I said on my monitor, uh, on my PC, that is 165 hertz. So I really could turn it down. There's no reason why I need it at 165 hertz. I can't see that fast. So I could lock it off at 120 and be fine. I'll probably lock it off 75. Like that monitor there is only 60 hertz and that's absolutely fine. I don't mind it at all. But some people do like that kind of slick, slippery feeling. Uh, Benny Hill says, I'll take a drop in graphics to feed my cat anytime. Good for you. That's the way, you, that's the way that we should be thinking about it. It's like, this is all very cool. Like having 32 gigs or 64 gigs of RAM, having terabytes of storage and all that is all well and good. But if you can't afford to eat, then it's all a bit pointless, isn't it? Get your potatoes in. Yeah. Uh, KZH says, I'm off mic, have a good night. Thanks, buddy. And uh, feel free to say hello on UK Hot Deals. I'm trying not to get us both banned. Yes, William Bodie, that's another plane. <laughs> yeah, that isn't, that's a plane this time, William. Uh, CXPS says, the future of PCs does not look great as of because the electric prices are expensive. Yeah, that is the trouble. It, I think consoles are going to make a big comeback because consoles use considerably less power and achieve a very similar, if not better, frame rate in a lot of games for usual uh, users. Uh, let's go, guys. Almost 80k subscribe all. Yes, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Uh, William Bodie says, what did not understand? Oh, there was an airplane that went over that you possibly might have picked up on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, definitely put a scan link in all of our interactions. Yes, definitely. Join our Discord if you want. Yeah, join our Discord. You can put the deals on there as well. Uh, William didn't hear it this time. Uh, Alright, let's close that. 62. UK hot deals, yes. Kevs, Kevs. Uh, do you feel the PC community is getting more greedy in terms of raw performance in newer products? Um, I, I definitely feel that there's a certain group of people that are like that. Um, I wouldn't say the PC community in general. Um... I'm in a, a very privileged position where I get to interact and talk to people from all walks of life, from all parts of the world. And there's a massive, massive difference in what, um, what people expect or want or need from their computers. I, I actually really enjoy it when there's people from without sounding rude I think or anything. talking more companies that provide... Oh, companies? That's what I would guess. Um, well, PC companies are getting more greedy, definitely. The PC community, I would say, isn't. Because there's a lot of people, especially in developing countries or countries where it's harder to get components. Uh, there's some countries which you don't really think of, which actually do struggle to get a lot of parts. Especially some of the... Um, kind of former Soviet Republic countries and things like um, Trinidad, Jamaica, Cuba, that kind of, uh, is that South America or South Americas? I'm not sure. My geography is not that great. And there's also like other countries as well. Uh, some parts in Africa, India, um, even, even England as well to some extent where people just love getting hold of older stuff because they're, they've not been able to when it all came out first of all because it's way too expensive because of the greed in the market. Whereas now it's all come down to being almost disposable or people just are, oh, I get what you're are a bit yeah. posh. 
and they're kind of like it's almost like the the hand-me-downs from your older brother or whatever or your cousins and they've got something which to them has no real value they don't want it anymore they hand it down to you and suddenly it's like awesome i've got this cool computer or i can play computer games or i can go online i can watch youtube videos it's those are the sort of people i really i love helping because they're new to it they're getting into it and they're kind of they're finding their way and i feel that i can help them a lot better than i can some people who've got like really expensive hyper end systems which i don't really have much interest in or to be completely honest with you much experience in so when they're saying i don't know why but i'm getting a weird glitch at 300 frames per second it's like well don't do 300 frames per second uh, lucky man's coming with two bangs there says way to go mike uh, you're on the ball two hours I know, it's actually, I think it might be helping my throat actually talking. I might have to do some throat exercises. I wonder if that's the thing, to strengthen up your diaphragm and your your larynx and all that. No, can't do that note, it's too high, it doesn't work. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. I think there's definitely greed in the market. NVIDIA are just greedy, greedy, horrible bastards, but their hardware does work pretty well. Um, sadly. James Miscellaneous is being very, being very pragmatic. We like pragmatic. Uh, saying about Aletta, it's, it's a hobby which brings you joy. Sometimes impractical things are okay. We have one life to live, make it a happy one. I agree. <laughs> Nice one, Benny. William Bodie, uh, a special lighter and ashtray in metal blue, plus a mud blue mouse just for you. Oh. Uh, James Resilient says, Mike, uh, you can be like the other YouTubers and pretend there's new. Ada Lovelace, RDNA 3 news every five minutes and make tons of views. You waste your time helping people. So yesterday. Yeah, I just... I know that doing stuff like that, like RDNA 2 or the new graphics card technologies, does get views because people are interested in it. But I'm not sure... I'm not 100% sure if people actually genuinely are. Or whether or not they're just following a bandwagon. Or it's just they're so bored that it's like, oh, graphics card news, great, I'll listen. I find it really boring, really boring. I much prefer to see a comparison like a, a GTX 1080 versus an RTX 3050. But that, that for me has got interest because like it's a budget graphics card now. The 1080 was the king of the crop. How does it compare five years later? That for me is actually genuinely interesting because you think in reality, you might be able to buy a GTX 1080 for a reasonable price, you, whereas you might not be able to get hold of a 3050. So you're thinking, is there a benefit in doing this? That is generally interesting to me. But at least you put them on at night and it gets me to sleep. I do, yeah. <laughs> Benny Hill, yeah. did you get ham? <laughs> Uh, Lucky Man says, so 3600 without XMP is sweet spot for MSI B550. No, 3600 will be the XMP speed. If you want the the JDEC or kind of base frequency, um, probably 3200 non-XMP is probably the sweet spot, but it's not really. It depends on the processor because you have what is known as the Infinity Fabric with AMD processors. So... The Infinity Fabric should be at exactly half of your DDR speed. So most um, Infinity Fabrics for AMD 5000 or 3000 is 1800 megahertz. So double that to get your DDR speeds is 3600, which really runs at 1800. Yeah, long story. But yeah, so DDR4 3600 is the kind of the sweet spot. 
that's going to give you your best performance. If you go with DDR4-3200, then the Infinity Fabric reduces down to 1600 megahertz, so you're not getting the most out of your processor. But for older processors, Ryzen 2000 series, that'd be perfect. Uh, Dutch Jan says, lol, today on hardware unboxed. Yes, that is where I actually got it from. It was quite an interesting um, evaluation. Yeah, Pascal, Pascal was a very good generation. It was too good for its time, really. Uh, 40 years anniversary for the Commodore 64. You know what else is a 40 year anniversary? Only bloody E.T., the extraterrestrial. The shit we went through on the 25th anniversary. Man, 40 years. That makes me feel <laughs> really old. And I swear it does for Drew Barrymore as well. That was around the time the Pang Coin came out. It was, wasn't it? Uh, Mark Barry says, just bought a 1070 for my son. Not too bad so far, but he's moaning already that it doesn't get better FPS compared to his old RX 5700 lol. It is getting better frames per second, but because most games will automatically detect the ability to run at better quality settings, it's probably up the quality settings. So if it reduced the quality settings back to 5700 level, uh, sorry, 570 level, it would be considerably faster. That one catches out a lot of people. Uh, Kev says, what happened on the, tw on the 25th anniversary of E.T., um, it came out on DVD, whereas previously it had only ever been on video. And uh, we had to buy it for our son and daughter. We had the video and it, and it, it was just getting chewed up. Yeah, it was a horrendous time. I ended up changing my DVD player, my TV, my stereo, basically my life. <laughs> because he wanted to ride his bike and act out E.T. because he's autistic. George wanted to be E.T. Not he, don't, he wanted to be Elliot. Oh yeah, you watched the Elliot, not E.T. <laughs> uh, E.T., the extra testicle. Which has cost us such a fortune to replace the video of E.T. Aletta says, dinner tonight is boiled chicken, peas and sauerkraut. I actually tried kefir today. Which is supposed to be kefir. Kefir. Which is supposed to be good. Kefir. I don't know. Not sure if it's it. working or not. Uh, RX 570 and 580, not my cup of tea. I think the RX 580 is one of the worst performance GPUs you can get. Uh, I like the 570. I had a 580, a couple of them actually. We've got sauerkraut. Should we make you try it for the first time ever now? I've never tried sauerkraut. Do you want to try some now? Go on then. Did you buy it? I bought it. I've had it in the fridge for ages. Oh, does it keep? I haven't opened it. Oh dear. Uh, sauerkraut, extremely healthy. Uh, Rick H says, I'm looking at a 2060 with 12 gigs of RAM. 2060 with 12 gigs would have been, for me, would have been absolutely awesome back in the day when I was doing video editing because the 6 gig version used to hit memory buffers all the time when I was doing video editing. So a 12 gig one would have been absolutely amazing. TechSoul, I agree. Oh, God. I don't know why, but I don't think I'm going to like this. Thin cabbage and salt water. Organic sauerkraut. I bet William Bodie eats it. It's German. Is it safe? Yes, new. I didn't want to open it. Kev, what is sauerkraut? Uh, apparently it is. I do want to make my own, but... Um, ingredients. Cabbage and salt water. Cabbage and salt water, basically. Infused with juniper berries. I can't even read that. Uh, ingredients, white cabbage, 97%, sea salt, juniper beans, berries, sorry. And that's it. <coughs> <laughs> I've never tried it either. I will try it after you. I don't want to be bullshit. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to like this. You need a spoon for a day. It's good for your probiotics. <laughs> oh. 
Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's really nice. This is the person that my mum used to have to hide cabbage under his mashed potato. <laughs> not too bad. I've had worse. Yeah, the best before date is 2024, I think. Yeah, it's 2004. No, 2024, sorry. Paint stripper. Uh, Dave Hall, how does that compare to you with Aussie? I like veggie. I like edgy. Uh, edgy. I like Aussie Vegemite. I quite enjoy that. Um... That sauerkraut would be nice with um, like ham or something, or maybe chicken or, or bacon or some sort of bacon y type thing. Stuart Clary went out for a beer. What was that in the jar? Uh, organic sauerkraut. <laughs> I let to love sauerkraut. James Miscellaneous, have you been watching um, Vegetable Police? Who said that? Um, no, James says that fermented vegetables are supposed to have all sorts of health benefits. That's what uh, Casey from uh, Vegetable Police has been on his journey, hasn't he, to find stuff out. Rick H says bacon is meat candy. It is actually, isn't it? It's the best probiotics you'll ever get. Uh, I've been eating Greek yogurt. Yeah, I've got kefir, which is kind of basically the same thing. But Mike doesn't usually have it unflavoured. No. But he has today. Let's have some, can I have some of that to wash my thing down? Please. What's it called? Kefir. Like that? Sauerkraut. Uh, Benny Hill says, tad windy tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think it's, um, I'm not gurgling yet. Kefir. So this has got fermented natural yogurt with live <laughs> kefir cultures. Again, it's supposed to be good for you. With my throat is being as bad as it is, I'm, I'll try anything. Uh, Mookie MC says, looking to get into watching classic British or UK sitcoms. Which classic sitcom should I start with? There's many. Uh, Faulty, Towers. Faulty Towers has got to be one of them. Um, Blackadder, that's always a good shout. Um, Bottom, I would say, The Young Ones. Open All Hours. Red Dwarf, yeah, that's a good shout. Mm. Yeah, I said that. One, one foot in the grave, yeah. IT crowd. That's not so much a classic one, but it is good. Porridge. Uh, some others do have them, which you might find with some content is not entirely politically correct. Although saying that, a lot of the older stuff, I think. Peep Show. Yeah, that's a good show. Um... Some, something which is probably not going to be that popular. Um, Hail and Pace. Bits. Gavin and Stacey. Gavin and Stacey. Peep not, Show. Not so much classic. Yeah, it says Peep Show. Um, little bit of Fry and Laurie. That was relatively entertaining. Morecambe and Wise. Come on, Morecambe and Wise. I hate that. Calf didn't like it, but it is. I used to quite enjoy more. Benny Hill Show. Come on, the Benny Hill Show. Open all hours, yep, yeah, good one. The Kumars, yeah, that's good. My Family, that's not a bad one, yeah. Saturday night, uh, no, Friday night dinner. Sa Friday night dinner. night dinner, yeah, that's quite good. Friday there's, night dinner, that's good. new series that we've never watched. 
Uh, Joe says, oh, you need sauerkraut on a brat with yellow. I can't have the mustard because my throat, sorry. In betweeners, yeah. Monty Python. I didn't always watch Monty Python. I've seen a few. Father Ted, yeah. Trigger Happy TV. Prisoner Cell Block H. <laughs> neighbors. Um, oh, I love Neighbors and Home and Away. The Good Life, yeah. Dick Emery. I can't believe YouTube hid that. Uh, Drop the Dead Donkey. I don't think I've ever seen that. Bless This House, yeah. Oh, uh, Kenny, oh. E Kenny Everett. Yeah, we've had that. Phone jacker. Oh, ooh, I was going to say one then. Oh. Um. Did Len Lenny, Hel Lenny Henry show? That used to be quite good, didn't it? TT. OTT. OTT, Tiz Walls, and the Lenny Henry show. Thank you, Joe. Oh yeah, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. I didn't like Mr. Bean. So I, I find it tolerable. I didn't like it at the time. But I didn't enjoy George it. George loved it. Ain't I Fault None? Yeah, that's quite good. Blackadder, definitely John Sullivan. Blackadder the second, for me, was the best one. I love that. That's got some classic stuff. Oh yeah, Little Britain. Not always the most politically correct, but very funny. Only Fools and Horses. Yeah, can't believe no one said that. Only <laughs> Fools and Horses. Harry Enfield Show, yeah. William Bodie says, please can you show your Benny Hill salute? There, Bob's going to screenshot that. Uh, Smack, the, Smack the Pony. Never watched that. John Sullivan. The turnip shaped thingy. Benny Hill says if it was banned, uh, you know it's good. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean is... I've got to be in the right mood to watch Mr. Bean. Two pints of lager. Oh yeah, two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. Keeping up appearances, that was, yeah, keeping up appearances was okay. I didn't like that a great deal, but it was okay. Oh, what else is, what else? Oh, there's been so many classic. Um, Mitchell and Webb, that's the uh, Michelin, yeah. Michelin Webb, yeah. The Desmonds, Shameless, yeah. Different strokes. That's American, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Only Fools and says, yeah, that's with that. The Bic Vicar of Dibley, that's quite, yeah, Vicar of Dibley. Um, I suppose you could also throw into that um, Absolutely Fabulous, possibly. Quite dated now, isn't it? Yeah. On the Buses. On the Buses is brilliant. Oh, what was that one where it was like... Gimme, 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 yeah. What was the one with the couple? And they just did it all in one bedroom. And her name was Becky, and he had to rub the apple because I'm not going to just eat something that fell off a tree. What was that? Called? Oh, that was on BBC Three, wasn't it? Um... Oh, I can't think now. Him and her. Him and her. Rising damp, yeah, that's good. Oh, Squibby just said him and her. Uh -huh. <laughs> just looked at the comments rather than. Mark Berry, I'll get you, Butler. I'll get you, Butler. <laughs> Love that. On the buses is brilliant. Son. Step to own son, yes. Time gentleman, please. I should have said that, shouldn't I? Time gentleman, please. He is my alter ego. Are you being served? Are you being served was actually very clever. Being human? Not really a comedy, I suppose, because, yeah. Comedy horror, I suppose. Dad's army, yeah. Heidi High. That was good. The Office. Yeah, The Office. I think they've done it in different countries, though, haven't they? Last of the Summer Wine, good yeah, The life, Good Life. Awesome. <laughs> Hogan's Heroes. Don't think. Is that a UK one? I've not heard of that. While Bill says, I always thought Steptoe and someone was disgusting. It was, I never really it was quite grim, it. wasn't it? Carry On Films. Yeah, the Carry On Films were awesome.
the A team, they always miss. The A team is actually available on, if you're a Prime subscriber or you've got Amazon Prime, the A team series one and two is actually free on Amazon Prime Video. I actually went through the whole two series and I think it's like 24 episodes in each one. Green Hill. Green Hill. I started watching that all over again. Love Thy Neighbour, yeah, that was a good one. Rising Damp. Anyone said that? Yeah, Rising Damp. I think we did. Or the Rising Fall of Reginald Perrin. Lucky Man says, Fol Folly Foot. How's that? Uh, Twi Twig Hiker. There's no one mentioned Faulty Towers. Yeah, Faulty Towers was pretty one of the first. Don't watch Casualty. <laughs> Ugly Bob says, don't watch Casualty, wasn't that funny. It was when I did stuff on it. Oh yeah, the Royal Family. Royal Family, of course. I had a t-shirt and looked like Jim Royal in it. <laughs> I love that t-shirt till you pointed that fact out. The A-Team in German, I bet that's amazing in German. Especially B.A. Baracus in German. Translated. Agatha Raisin. Um, I've actually got friends who worked on that. Count Arthur Strong. Never heard of that one. The Young Ones, yeah. The Young Ones is brilliant. Oh. Imagine Murdoch in German. <laughs> I'll be the same pet. Yeah, that's quite a good one as well. Keeping up, keeping up appearances. Yeah, there's been... There's been quite a lot, aren't there? To be fair. I'm trying to think. Oh, they'll all come to me when I'm trying to go to sleep tonight now. Yeah. Top Gear in German. I bet that's good fun. Filthy Rich and Cat Flap. Yeah, good shout. Good night, sweetheart. Never oh, got into that. Life after George. Oh, yeah. like The two Ronnies. Oh, of course, yeah. The two Ronnies. Oh, my God. How could we not say the two Ronnies? What are we doing comedies? Yeah. Well, yeah. Or sitcoms. Comedy stroke sitcom. James Michelin says, not talking about She-Hulk. Come on, she twerks. Oh, God. Four Candles. I was waiting for that. Someone to say that. Bottom was awesome. It's a shame, actually, we can't have a, a watch-along watching Bottom. That would be funny. In Sickness and in Health, yeah, that was good. Not the 9 o'clock news, of course, yeah. Spit an image. Hello, hello. I didn't like Hello, hello. I don't know why. I never understood why I didn't like it. There was nothing about it inherently which was offensive to me. But I just didn't like it. I don't know why. Not going out. That was it, wasn't it? Not going out. Gav? No, it was him and her. Oh, him and her, sorry, yeah. What was not going out? Not going out. I do recognise that. Yeah. The Fast Show, that was good. The Harry Enfield Show, I think we've already said that. Carry On Movies, yeah. Spit an Image. Naked Video, that was good. Naked Video, for those in, who are thinking, like, what? Naked Video wasn't about naked video, naked people. What was the... Some of the older people that are watching this might know this. What was the programme where they had uh, like a TV presenter on and they were doing these weird like um, segments and there was this one thing about this new drug called cake and they got someone like Phil Collins and other like celebrities to say just say no to cake and they had these like actual like little cake bar shapes or something. I think that was, was it like the news today or something? Brass Eye, thank you, Bob and Mystery. Brass Eye, yeah, Brass Eye was hilarious. Morning, Bobs. Hello. One Foot in the Grave. One Foot in the Grave was one of those things that I didn't like, but I kind of did as well. It was quite it's amusing. Because it just reminded you. It just reminded you. me of me, yeah. It's just like, oh, there's, there's me in 20 years. It's Poppy and Grumpy. Oh, not going out was with Tim Vine. That's it. Yeah, Tim Vine. Tim Vine is 
very, very clever. Not the nine o'clock news yet. Waiting for God. Derek, yeah, that's Derek. Derek's a little bit more of a modern one, but yeah, pretty good. Mookie MC says, I've seen a clip of a guy trying to impress some girls and he falls behind a bar. What shows that? That, my friend, is... Oh, God. Only? <laughs> Only Fools and Horses, yeah. I heard fall behind a bar. Only Fools and Horses watched the Christmas special, um, the one... Um, Just look for Batman. Uh, that was, that was actually filmed in Bristol. Most of it was, Most of it was yeah. Only Fools and Horses, a lot of it was filmed in Bristol. Oh yeah, the Dave Allen show, that's good. Candid camera, yeah. Is that the in-betweeners? In-betweeners, yeah. Candid camera. Smile. Actually, it's something even older than that would have been... Um, what was the one with the Jeremy Beadle? Game for a Laugh? Yeah. Oh, what was um, the one with Esther Ransom? Bottom. <laughs> he made the drink, then he called the Esther Ransom. <laughs> Watch out, Beatles are about. That's the one. But it used to be on a Sunday night. Beatles are about. It wasn't really a sitcom or anything, but it was a. Oh, I know, that was. Oh. <laughs> no, it'd have the dog that said sausages. Can you... Bob, you'll know this. What was the Sunday night show with Esther Ranson? It was Why like a. Language? It was a public kind of announcement type programme. But that's he also life. had some. That's life. That was it. That's life. That was great. It wasn't supposed to be funny, but it was hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious in a dark way. Hey, Bob's coming up. You want me, Granny? Spaced. I never got into that. Should have watched that. Men behaving badly. Oh, yeah. Good shout. But a lot of them went on too long, didn't they? Yeah, a lot. That's it. A lot of the, a lot of them do do stop me. Yeah. The Kenny Everett show was brilliant. Uh, Peter Serafinois was very good. Yeah, if you don't know who he is, he was Pete in um, Shaun of the Dead. Only Bob says that's life was terrible but hilarious at the same same time. Veg vegetable shaped like Willie's. Yeah, the Detectorist was slow and good. Oh yeah, that was with um, Jasper Carrot and the guy who played Jesus of Nazareth. I gave you a carrot shaped like a Willie, didn't I, for your fortieth? Benny Hill says, brotherly love, uh, Kenny Everett with huge hands. Here, yeah. Bradley, Bradley, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was good. The Tetris was freaking awesome. Thin Blue Line, that was, yeah, I quite like that, that was all right. Oh dear, we have gone completely off topic here, haven't we? This this is when it gets to uh, it's almost like this is the mub mub club. Actually, we should do that. I think. Uh, Wild Bill says I lived in Africa from 1976 to 1999, so never saw a lot of the programs you're mentioning, but I bet you heard a lot of Toto. I bet you did. Oh, skags me, mouse man. Well, Bill, you've got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, Mookie MC says, I've seen a clip of an older, sort of grumpy man answering the phone, but he picks up a small dog or some animal, I think. That is uh, one foot in the grave. <laughs> Bless the rains down in Africa. Chance in a million. Not, not sure of that one. Wild Boys. Stuart Clear is getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> Wild <Wow>, Bill. <laughs> there we go. Right. I think, actually, is that something that any of you that are still watching this would be interested in? If maybe... Um, you Cause, Duran Duran for an hour. Well, because we can't do it on YouTube, because obviously for copyright. But if we maybe did it on Discord or on Patreon, 
where we do a live stream watching Odyssey. yeah or maybe Odyssey or something actually watching an older um, UK sitcom and maybe going through it and rating it possibly would that be something that it would be uh, fun to do that people would like to get get involved with maybe I'll do that I'll possibly um, I would I'll, I'll put it into the YouTube community tab thing at some point or the pop up and I'll do a quick straw poll and see if it is something that people would be interested in doing. I think it would be quite a, quite a good thing to do. And if so, they can comment which sitcom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. And then we would uh, decide what film or programme we're going to watch together. Mookie MC says, I love watching the UK sitcom. Some of them are really good. Some could be real funny. And it would be good fun. We could just do that. Um... Only if you build a PC while it's on. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. Only if you do a Benny Hill on the BMX hospital scene. I'll see what I can do. He did drive the, his BMX. I did drive my BMX into our paddling pool. And went over the handlebars. Over the handlebars, into the pool. And the neighbours were shot out wondering what that huge splash was. <laughs> it was like shallow hell. <laughs> right, I think that's something we should definitely look into. And speaking of looking into, I think we should look into wrapping this up because we've been on for two and a half hours. Although I think it has. I wonder if it's because I'm not talking enough. Because literally when I'm at home, apart from when I'm filming a video, I'm basically silent. Come on. Yeah. I don't say a lot, do I? I wonder if it's because I'm not talking. I wonder if it's because you can't get a word in edgeways. It's possible. It is possible. <laughs> or it might be that cafe or working. <clears throat> might be. Just feels really tight in my throat. Anyway, so hopefully you've had a, somewhat of a giggle tonight. I've enjoyed myself, even if you haven't. So what the hell? It's worth it to me, and made a few quid on the side. So happy <laughs> days. <laughs> and I've um, yes, it's, yes. I have. I am silent at home. Generally, I'm silent because I'm either concentrating or answering questions, and I can't answer them with my voice. I have to type, so I'd be quiet. Uh, yeah, hopefully you've all had good fun. It was a fast two and a half hours, actually. It flew by. I used to be really terrified years ago with doing streams. Oh, God, how am I going to feel two hours? And now I realise it's just easy. I just talk bollocks and it's, just, it's fine. <laughs> right. Anyway, yes, that's going to wrap things up. Thank you all so much for putting up with me and my, uh, my croaky voice. Hopefully it's not going to continue for too long. Um, like I said, there might be fewer videos if I'm either trying to rest my throat or it's just not allow me to say the things I want to say but yeah it is what it is so hopefully like you said hope you've enjoyed this evening you've had a bit of a laugh and a bit of a giggle and got to socialize with other like-minded lunatics like myself and you guys out there if you're new here hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and all that other kind of youtube -y stuff if you haven't already please smash the like button and potentially if you want to share this video with your friends although probably better off sharing maybe some of the more mainstream videos rather than the streams because uh, yeah, we do go a little bit off track at times. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and um, I'm just glad the stream has actually worked for once, which has been bloody great. A big stress reliever. So that leaves me to say thank you very much, and we'll uh, see you next time. Night all. <laughs>